Welcome back guys, what's going on? Before we get into the video, I just wanted to say I'm super, super excited about something that I'm creating. I am building some software and so I'm trying to do the whole entrepreneurial thing like a startup. And so there's more news coming, just, you know, be on the lookout, it's exciting times. So make sure you subscribe, stick around to follow my journey. I'm doing an Elon Musk, you know, Elon was uh, starting a PhD in physics and he dropped out to do that. Haven't dropped out yet, but you know, I'm trying to do everything at once. It is tough. So hopefully, we'll, let's just see where this goes. So make sure you follow, lo follow along. Let's get into today's video. Today we're checking out uh, a video I watched when I was a young kid uh, and someone requested this in a previous video. Let me change the screen. I'll show you. We're gonna be reacting to this. Fourth dimension explained by a high school student. Someone asked me to watch this. <laughs> I remember watching it when I was young, but I can't remember. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to make fun of this kid. I mean, I'm sure he's older now. This was 2010. Wow. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm not a believer in like mocking people. Uh, kindness over everything. So I just want to see what he has to say and I can comment on it. I'm not going to mock the kid. I think it's awesome that, you know, the kids, you know, thinking about this stuff at such a young age, he looks young at least. Um, so yeah, mad respect to him giving her a crack but i think an important thing to remember if you're a young kid out there watching this just be very careful with what you think you know uh there's a lot of kids out there who think they they know everything you know <laughs> and as you you start to go into physics and stuff it's like wow i really don't know anything but anyway imagine that this folder is a dimensional plane now assuming that it is no height and no depth what would this mean it would mean that it's a one-dimensional so what an easy way to understand what a dimension is because people think of when you when you say dimension they're like this magical place right <laughs> but think of it like this one dimensional just means you need one num one number to describe uh where you are right if it's one dimensional you only need you know like say you have a ruler you know a 10 centimeter ruler well, if you say you're at five centimeters, that tells you where you are in this one dimension. That's why it's one dimensional. Now go to two dimensions. And you got something like this. Uh, you need two numbers to describe where you are. You need, you know, a number on the first axis and a number on the second axis. And that'll say like over here. But if you're going to describe this point, you need th those two uh, numbers on, from both dimensions. Uh, same with 3D. Now you need, you know, you've got another one at a right angle to those and you need all you know, three numbers from each dimension. So the fourth dimension, spatial dimension, which, you know, I want to let this kid explain his idea, but that's what it's going to be. You just need four numbers to describe where you are. And actually, I'll just say, you know, in Einstein's relativity, that's what the fourth dimension is. Uh, he treats it as time, though. It's not a, another spatial dimension. There's three spatial dimensions, one time dimension. And if you want to know where you are in space-time, well, you need the three spatial dimensions. You need three numbers to you know, know where you are in space. But you also need to know where you are in time. Because space and time are kind of the same thing. They, they're, they're like two sides of the same coin. And as you go back, in, as you go through space, you're moving in time. And so the further you look out in space, the uh, the earlier in time you're looking and so you it's really important to know where you are in time so that's why you need that you know we treat it as another dimension world so if hypothetically an organism was living inside of it it would only be able to move in a linear path forward and backwards in a straight line now if we go to the second dimension we have two dimensions we have width and we have length so hypothetically if an organism lived inside of here wait let me just uh lower this quality it's a little bit choppy because my l laptop is not very oh, it's only 360 okay let's try it now here then it would be able to move up down left Physics. right and anywhere else in between and a two-dimensional world is comprised of an infinite series of one-dimensional worlds stacked upon each other just as our three-dimensional world which has depth and length and height is comprised of an infinite series of two-dimensional worlds. So this now that I have stacked many folders upon each other, we have three dimensions. We have depth, we have length, and we have width. Now what happens if you keep going on from here on out? We would have a four-dimensional world, but what exactly is a fourth dimension? 
In order to understand this, we need to understand how dimensions are perceived. To get to a full spatial dimension, well, to get to three dimensions, you have to, you know, you've got dimension one at a right angle to that, you've got another dimension at a right angle to those, both of those is another dimension. And so you need something at a right angle to all three of those. And just try and try and picture that. You can't. <laughs> but anyway, let's keep going. We live in the three-dimensional world, but despite that, we actually view things to be two-dimensionally. Take a perfect sphere, for example. If you're looking at a sphere, it looks just like a regular two-dimensional circle. The only way that you can tell it's an actual sphere instead of a circle is because of the hues of light down. So just like in a two-dimensional world, if a um, organism in the two-dimensional world was looking upon a circle, it would, the light would make it appear to be lighter at one end and darker at the middle. Also, imagine that this connects piece represents the first dimension. It's simply a straight line, which is basically what the first dimension looks like. And if you add three more of these straight lines and connect them to, so that adjacent sides are perpendicular, and opposite sides are parallel, then you have the basic shape of the second dimension. You have a square. Now if you keep going from here, and you add, four, add it so that there's a total of four squares, and all adjacent sides are perpendicular, and all opposite sides are parallel, then you end up with, obviously, a cube. So, if you try to keep going from here, and you would have a four x so what it would look like is at these corners here you would need another sort of one of these lines right to stick off from here at a 90 degree angle from this one this one and this one now try and imagine that okay so let's if you do it like into the sort of ground here with that no it wouldn't be 90 degrees for any of them. So you could do, you know, a line here that's 90 degrees to this one and this one, but it won't be of that one. And so what I'm getting at is it's basically impossible to do that. You can't get, you can't stick a stick here and it's at 90 degrees to all three of these dimensions. So that's why you actually just can't visualize four spatial dimensions. Actually, it looks like. Yes, he's completely correct. But there is something interesting you can do and you can see the shadow of uh, a four-dimensional cube, a tesseract, which we'll see if he talks Going about it, he might. This kid obviously, you know, knows his stuff. Another reason this doesn't make sense is that we very, very, very slightly travel through time whenever we move due to the distance um, that light takes to get to our body. Now, if a group of astronauts were to get... I think you said that a little bit incorrectly. Like, if you're not moving, you're still traveling through time. <laughs> You can't not travel through time. You can you can slow it right down if you know you travel near the speed of light, or you go near some uh, really large mass. But yeah, uh, you're always traveling through time. Um, anyway, I forgot what he said previously. I think I had a problem with something. But in a spaceship, I forgot. and they were to go very, very, very close to the speed of light, then they would, and they they went around in this um, impossible nearly the speed of light spaceship for a few months, and then afterwards they returned to Earth. They would find that Earth had actually progressed a few years, so they had moved forward in time by moving that quickly. Well, if they were near the speed of light, there would have been a lot more time that passes by on Earth. Another interesting concept involving the fourth dimension is that many physicists and even mathematicians uh, may say that the dimensions are very, very slightly curved, because if you really think about it, nothing can be truly, absolutely infinite. So imagine that a the first dimension, the line, is just very, very slightly curved, so that after a very long time, it will um, end up creating a circle. So, um, as suggests by many physicists, if you keep going in the same direction, then you will end up where you are, where you started after a very, very long amount of time, obviously. And the same thing would happen to the second dimension. If it's just a square, and then you extend it very, very slightly in a curve, then it will eventually make a sphere. And the same thing happens in our dimension, except it will form a very, very slightly curved um, third dimension, which will form a four-dimensional universe, basically. 
So he's, he, this is really off because uh, what he's referring to is the fact that he, he's talking about the uh, the shape of the universe, essentially. Okay, and there's, it is theoretical. You know, we don't know for sure, but many physicists think that uh, there is a slight po possible curvature to the universe. It looks quite flat. You know, we're pretty sure the shape of the universe is flat. And you might say, "What the hell does that mean? What do you mean flat, man? <laughs> don't worry about that for right now because it's not what I'm trying to get at." But we think the geometry of the universe is flat. Um, and some physicists think it only looks flat because we're looking at a very small chunk. And so there might be some really slight curvature that we can uh, figure out through physics. Um, and if there is some slight curvature, that would mean, you know, that it might actually, you know, form this, you know, single object come back in on itself. Uh, this is all theoretical. We, th there's no current evidence for any curvature. It looks completely flat. And, but again, it might just look flat because we're looking at such a small, you know, part of an in huge universe that's much bigger than our little observable universe. Um, what else did he say? Yeah, so what, what he said there about, like, each dimension's uh, have some slight curve. No, that's not true. Our, in our universe, we think uh, the universe itself, yes. But I just wanted to make that distinction because, you know, in mathematics, no. You know, a dimension is, they don't have little bits of curvature. So what this kind of means is that our three-dimensional world is within a four-dimensional world and the four-dimensional world is within a fifth-dimensional world and so on. It, no, it doesn't. Now, I did say that nothing can be truly infinite, but if this is true, and a dimension... I mean, there is some evidence for things being infinite, you know, in mathematics. Uh, digits of pi. Looks like there's no pattern to it. Looks like it's an infinite, you know, uh, series of numbers. Uh, so, you might have heard of the Mandelbrot set. Like, you can zoom in on this complex pattern, and it almost infinitely, you know, changes. And it never exactly repeats. I think that could be another piece of evidence of uh, an in, in infinite infinity in nature. ...is really within another dimension, within another dimension, within another dimension, then I'm implying that there's an infinite amount of dimensions, which is the only problem I really have with the theory. I'm not sure if it ever stops or if infinite infinity is... So I don't think um, his logical conclusion there really makes a lot of sense. I don't think... Um, there's really any evidence that there are higher dimensions spatially. Uh, I can tell you something in a second about theoretically, you know, theoretical higher dimensions of our universe of, you know, theoretical physics, but I don't think there's any, <laughs> he just kind of made it sound like there is indirect evidence for it, but it's not true. Um, you might've seen the movie Interstellar, right? And they play around with the idea of higher spatial dimensions. There's this, you know, a, a fourth spatial dimension uh, called the... And, you know, that's what happens at the end of the movie and how he gets back. Uh, but anyway, let's not... If you want to know more about that, I actually did a video. Uh, it's, I think, like the second video I ever made, the Interstellar one. So go watch that. I break down uh, what happened at the end of the movie and explain it and those, that, you know, those higher dimensions. So go check it out if you want to watch that really even possible. We don't know that. Thanks for watching my video and I hope this gave you a better idea of what the fourth dimension is. I think that was really good. He did a really good job. I honestly thought it was going to be way more wacky and just like be way more off but he was he was really close. Like everything he said was pretty good. So huge respects to this kid. He was clearly a very curious kid. Hope he remained curious. I just want to read some of these comments. The physics teacher have the anxiety attack every time this boy raises his hands. He is better at explaining than most of my teachers at college. He was pretty good. I completely agree. Uh, he has been having health issues and has been focusing on his health more. It's a second channel and lost the password to this one. Oh, damn. Search his name on YouTube and you'll find his new channel. Oh, poor kid. And health issues. Poor man. I think, yeah, hopefully he's okay. Poor kid. The reason why time is associated with dimensions is that you have to represent a space dimensions for each tick of perception. It, okay, this guy's just talking out of his ass. This man is actually an ethereal being who sees and lives in 4D. Feels like he time traveled, learned everything, came back at the same age and teaching the world. Only thing left of future is his voice. Okay. Um, 
anything interesting? Through my years in university, I've learned that really all discussion about physics are kind of sci-fi if you don't go and work the math yourself. If you, the reader, are truly interested in understanding physics, watching conceptual videos is fun and gives you a good idea of things, but you don't truly know know it until you go through a couple of textbooks. Um, I agree and disagree. I think, you know, if, you, if someone explains things conceptually you know, in a good way, uh, I don't actually think you need necessarily the underlying math. However, there is a lot of stuff in physics that we don't really understand conceptually how it works. We really only have math. Uh, you know, quantum theory. There's a lot of stuff at the deep end there in quantum field theory, which there is no uh, analog conceptually in our universe. So you can't even imagine conceptually what's going on. You can only understand the math. And that's why when people try and give you know, conceptual pictures or examples of things from quantum field theory. It's always wrong. It's like saying how I, I do, I'm guilty of this sometimes too. I say, you know, everything's waves in quantum field theory, but <laughs> they're not waves. It's the, it's kind of the closest analog you can get to what's going on with these quantum fields, but they're not in any sense. Oh, it's, there's no waves involved. <laughs> so we, we're kind of forced to lie to you. Otherwise, it's just like we, we can't talk about it because the only way language we have to describe it is math. But I mean, Dirac has a famous saying. It's like, you know, one should learn to hold the concepts and ideas uh, of physics in your head without reference to the mathematic mathematics. But, you know, I think uh, there, are, there are areas now <laughs> You just can't do that. If you want to be like Sheldon and learn some physics, but you don't know where to start or you think it's too hard, Brilliant is a great option because it makes it fun and easy. Brilliant have sponsored this video, so big thank you to them. Trying to learn physics by just watching, it's a bit like trying to learn how to ride a bike by watching someone else ride a bike. Learn interactively with Brilliant's fun hands-on lessons in math, science, and computer science. There's been some work to show that learning interactively actually helps you learn six times more effectively than just watching lecture videos. Join millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for you guys. Head to brilliant.org forward slash Dylan J Dance to get started for free learning with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will also get 20% off an annual membership. So thanks again to Brilliant. Check them out if you want to learn some physics. Let's get back to the video. But anyway, I think we'll end the video there, guys. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down under, you know, if you have any good suggestions for things to watch. And I'll check them out. See you next time.